We're officially in 2024, and one of the things that I've always wanted to do earlier in the year rather than later is to tell you about the tech stack that I'm using in my business. What's powering and fueling this digital entrepreneurial journey that I'm on. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all of the tools that I'm using. Specifically, I want to emphasize some of the changes that I'm making to my tech stack, and they are fairly significant, and they're going to represent a big push of my content direction uh, for the rest of this year. This isn't going to be a how-to or a follow-along as I guide you on my implementation. That's coming. That's coming very soon on a lot of my deeper builds. But for this video, it's going to be, here are the tools I'm using, here's what they're doing. I might show some of the things that I'm doing with those tools, but for the most part, it's going to be an explanation with links down below if you're interested in checking out any of the tech stack, thinking you might want to look into it to emulate some of what I'm doing. Now, I want to get started by talking about what's different in my tech stack. And I've heard from a lot of you in the last couple of months, honestly, more than I hoped that I would hear from, just being totally honest. And you're asking for an alternative to Thrive Suite. It's the suite of plugins that includes a page builder, a theme builder, course platform, etc. You're asking for alternatives to that related for whatever reason. Now, I want to be very clear that I still love Thrive. I'm still going to show you how I'm using most of Thrive in a big part of my business, but you've asked for alternatives. So one of the things that I focused on the last three months of 2023 was developing my skills and adding into my repertoire new tools that I could honestly put my recommendation behind. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you what I am recommending as an alternative and what I'm actually using in my tech stack. I will not make a recommendation to you that I'm not actually going to use myself. So the theme that I'm going to use on my main site, that's convology.com, is going to be Astra. I really, really like Astra for a couple of reasons. It's very lightweight. It has a performance focus. The theme itself is not going to slow down my website. I really like that. I also really like the fact that it's made by the same people that make SureCart and Sure Triggers and Sure Members. More on that in the tech stack that's coming up. But I really like this theme, but specifically, I like using Spectra, which is, they call it a visual website builder. I, I don't think I'd go that far. This is more of a, it's like a block builder enhancement to the WordPress block builder. I don't even know if they still call it Gutenberg. Historically, I have hated the WordPress block builder. I'm not even going to pull the punches. It's historically been something that I think is terrible. I still think it has a lot of limitations, but Spectra improves upon a lot of a lot of the functionality and it adds enough to bring this to the point where I would say, yeah, this is actually really good. Something that I'm willing to use on my own website. So I'm rebuilding convology.com into Astra using Spectra. And I'm making this distinction because I have my subdomain members.convology.com where I have all of my courses. That's where I have SureCard installed. That's where all of my digital content is accessed. That's all still running Thrive Suite, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. But my main website, which I've always considered my brochure or my marketing site, it's where I put my tutorials and my blogs and my videos. It's my forward facing site. That's going to be in Astra using Spectra. And for a sneak peek of what's coming, here is the homepage that I have been working on rebuilding for a little while. You can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Um, kind of finishing, wrapping up, rebuilding it. So this is like a Kind of a coming soon type of thing. And you can see here, I have built the whole thing uh, using blocks and the block builder using Spectra full of containers. I have so many tutorials coming for using Astra and Spectra and migrating from Thrive Theme Builder, if that's at all interesting to you. And we're going to dive into this and take a look at my journey moving a three plus year old website that I have built the foundation of my business on to this new platform. So I think there's a lot of really valuable content there for many of you. You have been asking me for it. And honestly, that's the only reason I am doing this because you have asked and I'm trying to listen and create content that is valuable to you while also staying ahead of the curve and looking forward and projecting into the future a best practice for my own business. Now, when it comes to my subdomain, which is my members.combology.com, it's where the functional side of my business happens. This is all still built entirely on Thrive Suite. So I have Thrive Architect powering the build here. This is my same dashboard that I've used for the last 12 plus months. It's the one I've taught you how to build here on my YouTube channel. I sell this template on my website. I 
still really love Thrive Apprentice for a learning platform, like an educational course platform for WordPress, Thrive Apprentice is still, in my opinion, the best option out there. So you can see here, I still have Thrive Apprentice powering all of my courses. It will still power most of my courses coming in the future. And that's because I'm putting a little asterisk there by saying I might try putting some of my courses on another platform, my community platform, which I'll get to later in the video called Circle. Love what they're doing with courses. But for now, from a WordPress perspective, Thrive Apprentice here, as you can see, is still powering and will be powering in 2023 my course stack. Now, if you're looking for an alternative to a learning or course platform and you're just wanting to protect content and do a membership, I recently did a video on Sure Members. I highly recommend that platform. It's one that honestly I wish I could use and possibly will use in the future as they grow beyond uh, just protecting basic content and move into more of like a course ecosystem. I love that because of their integration with Surecart but it's not there yet, so I'm still recommending Thrive Apprentice. But if you wanna check out something that's a little simpler, more straightforward, check out Sure Members in the video that I have on my channel. Earlier last year, I moved to Surecart, powering all of my, I'm gonna put this in quotes, e-commerce side of my business. That's what I'm using to sell access to my courses and membership and community. The checkout and funnel and all of that is built using Surecart. So for example, this is my current Convology Pro checkout page. This is another form that I've built for my Thrive Suite Premium Bundle. I love the flexibility of Surecart to build forms, to use instant checkout pages. It works phenomenal by default right out of the cart with Astra and Spectra because it's made by essentially the same company. And it allows you to create a really fantastic interface for allowing users to manage their accounts. So for example, the My Order section here on my website, allowing users to manage their downloads, update their account, upgrade from one product to another seamlessly by paying the difference. The subscription tools are super, super powerful. I have a video on my channel all about why I chose Surecart as my solution over other great solutions like Thrivecart and other things like that. Surecart is just moving in the direction and continues to move in the direction that I want to move with my business. It's a phenomenal tool that I highly, highly recommend. Now that segues nicely into what I use for the workflow and automation side of my business. I use Sure Triggers, made by the same company that makes Astra, Spectra, Surecart, Sure Members, etc. And this is what I use to automate things in my business. So for example, I'm looking at a current workflow on my website when a user purchases uh, my community product in Surecart, I add them to my community in Circle, and then I use an API integration to send all that data over to high level. We'll talk about that in a second. And I'm able to really easily and intuitively build workflows, make API connections to third-party products. I'm able to tie my whole business together. And really a lot of what I do here on my channel and in my one-on-one -on -one calls with all of you, this is where a lot of the magic happens, right? This is where we take piece of our tech stack A and connect it to piece of our tech stack B. We make the tools talk with each other and we build and automate a business that we can rely on. Sure Triggers is really kind of maneuvered its way into being the, the backbone of my business on the automation side. So I would say this is for sure a new piece of my tech stack in 2024 and one that I also highly recommend you check out. If you're using something else like Zapier or Pavly, those are all great tools. I, I definitely won't diminish them. I know a lot of you use things like make.com, etc. But if you're using the SureCart, SureMembers, ecosystem and you're starting to move your tech stack in the direction that I am with circle and maybe you're using an email tool like fluent CRM or high level or any of the big ones sure triggers does a very nice job of pairing all of those tools together in a, a very affordable and seamless way uh, speaking of affordability they are way more affordable than Zapier on a value dollar to dollar spend they're better value than Pabli and I believe they're a better value than make in terms of just dollar to dollar spend and what you get and what you can do with it. So check that out if you're interested in a tool that can kind of connect everything together in a really seamless way. All right, on to the next tool. Uh, this is high level. You can see I'm just in here using a white labeled version of high level. It's what I use for myself and, and many of my clients. Towards the end of last year, I'd say Q4, I decided that, you know what, I've been using high level for a lot of my marketing clients, a lot of the client work in my agency that I do, and their 
email tools and their automation tools came a really long way in 2023 to the point where it's something that I looked at and I said, you know what? That's actually a really good value for me. And that's actually something that I want to use in Convology instead of something like Fluent CRM. Nothing wrong with Fluent CRM. I used it all last year, most of the year before-ish, kind of when it came out. It's decent. I just wasn't looking for a WordPress-based solution anymore. And that's, I'm going to here, I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger so I can talk to you about this. A big part of 2024 for me is really trying to consider what should be WordPress-based and what shouldn't. Things to think about are with Flint CRM, if you're going to take a backup and restore to a backup, you're literally restoring into the past. And if something crashes with your website, there goes your whole email list. Yes, there's backups and things, but I just don't love WordPress-based solutions for really pivotal pieces of my business. It's one of the reasons I love Surecart because it's headless. It's all that data is not on my WordPress site. It's elsewhere, kind of like all of your customers' data isn't, you know, your their credit cards aren't on your site. They're in Stripe or PayPal or something like that. So when it comes to my email marketing, 2024 is going to be a year where I I I said this last year and I failed at it. Right? We can all relate. I really want to focus more on email marketing. Again, I'm putting that in quotes because I'm not really doing marketing by email as much as I'm doing what's the best way to phrase this? Building relationships using email to help connect people that are connected to me with tools that I'm using, the tutorials that I'm making, the courses and products that I'm offering. I just want to do a better job using email to grow my business. And I think a lot of you can relate to that as well. So the tool here, let me pop down here into PIP again. The tool that I really do love for this in 2024, and then I tested in the Q4 of last year is high level. And you can see here, I've got my workflows. Funny enough, they call automations workflows and sure triggers calls their automations workflows it's just automation so for example i have my free course funnel here if i open this up right what's the trigger they get tagged creates a user in thrive apprentice adds them to thrive ultimatum sends them an email waits does conditional logic sends another email so anything tied to email and connectivity of my users between my tech stack in relation to email and data kind of about them, I'm doing in high level. I really like the way this connects with my tech stack using sure triggers, webhooks and API calls are really functioning well for me. So I'm a fan of this and I'm, I'm a fan of their email builder and where that's going. So in 2024, I'm going to grow and extend my, my workflows here. There's one I want to show you in particular, if I go to onboarding, and I go to course and product tagging here, you can see like there's a webhook that comes in, creates user in high level, tags them, does a condition, you know, what product did they buy? And it checks for the products that they buy, it tags them. You, know, you can't do this level of conditional breakdown inside of something like Fluent CRM. This can use arrays and it's just a more robust and powerful tool. That's where I'm at in my business. So high level definitely does it for me there. If your business needs a CRM, things like that. High level is also really good. The CRM component allows you to do text messaging and it's one of the top CRMs uh, that I've personally used. Uh, they have a lot more. I think I did another video on this on my channel. It's been one of those years where I'm trying to keep up with what I'm creating content for publicly and privately. They do a lot. High level does a lot, but specifically the things I'm using it for are email, email automation, and some light CRM usage. It can do a ton of other things like websites, communities, courses, etc. I don't use it for that. Don't really recommend it for that. I have other tools on my tech stack that I prefer instead. Now, one of my favorite tools and a tool that I've been using now for about three years, I think, is Circle. Uh, it's a community platform and it's grown in the last year to also be a course platform and more. Uh, I use it to manage our our whole entire Convology community. Uh, we have our general tech stack, our, our Thrive Suite section. We, we've got a mastermind going in here for pro members. Uh, we do office hours. You can see here weekly office hours where people can just jump in and RSVP, post their questions and things like that. I, I'm i a big fan of Circle. And I kind of alluded to this earlier in the video where I said most of my courses will, will stay in Thrive Apprentice. I'm considering taking some of my smaller 
like workshop type things and moving those into my community. And that's because I have some pretty big plans uh, for how I'm going to alter my core offering at Convology. And the community is going to play a bigger role in that because just being honest, courses are fantastic. But over the last three years, I've really come to discover that people want more than just a DIY course. Maybe you can relate. You buy a course, you do one or two of the lessons, you kind of get frustrated by just doing stuff by yourself. Maybe you, you, you like a different type of learning environment. I have found that although my course completion rate is really high and it was great last year, I still find that people learn better when they're surrounded by support in a community, live trainings, things like that. So I'm moving more in that direction and Circle is going to play a big role in that because of how courses can be woven into a community. I can do more office hours, more live events, things like that. So stay tuned if that's of interest to you. Uh, but in general, I love Circle for my community. I highly recommend it. I've moved so many people from Facebook to Circle last year. You know, it was great doing work with all of you. And, I'm, and I've gotten a lot of great feedback that you're loving Circle as well. So Circle is my community recommendation. And I have zero plans on changing that. For lead capture and audience segmentation, I'm still using ConvertBox. I have been for maybe three or four years. Um, this is their website. I just I thought it was a better example than trying to find my own stuff. Maybe I'll find one in a second. But basically, for forms, quizzes, opt-ins, lead magnets, gosh, I mean, actually, a good option here. Let me show you mine. I've had this free training on my site here. This is a better example uh, for probably two years now. And... <laughs> I should make more trainings, but this one, I put one free training up here. It's kind of pathetic now that I think about it. I've had one free training on my website, but this single, but this one single form here to enroll in, this is ConvertBox. People put their name and their email in, then I send it off to Sure Triggers, where I validate their email with a tool called Zero Balance, and then I put them into High Level, which then sends them back to Thrive Apprentice and gives them access to just a piece of this training on, on this particular one is Thrive Theme Builder. And this single opt-in um, with ConvertBox, and this is a very kind of probably poor example because it's so simple. You could use any tool to do this really, but you can do things that I call convert quiz funnels, a whole course on that. There's just so much you can do with connecting and getting users data, like their name and their email and data about them in a quiz, combined with a bunch of other tools in my tech stack. This is a tool that I use. I just love the interface. I love building and enhancing my opt-ins using ConvertBox. And it's one of those things that's kind of hard to explain, but people get it when they try it. Like if you try ConvertBox, you'll understand why you might like it more than Thrive Leads. It's just a newer, better interface. And I like it better than those other tools like Sumo and Monster Opt-in and things like that. It's just a, a better tool overall. All right, now for web hosting, kind of like a not super fun topic, but web hosting is important. And for the last year, probably actually two and a half years, I think maybe two years, uh, I've posted all about it on my website. I, I've been using Big Scoots. Uh, they, they have been a breath of fresh air and the air has been fresh. That sounds lame, but the air has been fresh for the entirety of time using them. Uh, I love their WordPress managed hosting. It's the only truly managed hosting that I have found. Everyone else uses the word managed hosting and they don't mean it. It's just a word they use, but Big Scoots means it. Uh, I use, I actually have their, I have their business plan and I highly recommend it. I have 20 of my own websites on it. And I think I just broke 100 client managed websites on Big Scoots now. I moved a lot of you last year from Cloudways and WPX and other hosting platforms, actually less from less from WPX, mostly from WP Engine and Cloudways over to Big Scoots. Uh, for the most part, you all are extremely happy with the move. Um, I love Big Scoots, highly recommend them. I have a coupon uh, that you can get a discount on. I'll put it in the, the comments. I'll put it in the description down below. Um, but for something that's not very fun to talk about, I love Big Scoots for hosting. So that's all there is to it. Also not the most fun topic to talk about is video hosting and file hosting. I use uh, BunnyNet. I have now for several years. Some of the most popular videos on my entire channel, maybe the most popular, uh, is a video all about BunnyNet and BunnyStream. I put every video on here now. I, I still have a Vimeo account just because I'm lazy and don't want to move my course videos. I have several hundred. 
but anything new is going on BunnyNet and has now for over a year. I use it to host, like I said, office hour videos, course videos. I use it for my lead magnet downloads, uh, what my wife uses it for all of her e-commerce website hosting downloads. So if she sells something in her WooCommerce store and is a digital product, we link it over from Bunny. Uh, I host a lot of my tutorial videos here. My workshops are hosted here. Uh, it hasn't let me down yet. It has phenomenal streaming and hosting capabilities, and it's it does so at an extraordinarily good value. Like I said, a dollar minimum per month, but you'll barely spend over that unless you start doing some serious uh, content development. And one of the newest components of my tech stack uh, that I am migrating to uh, this year, actually, I haven't yet migrated, but I will be migrating once they complete two tweaks to the platform, uh, mostly the Google Calendar integration being a one-click rather than developer or Google Cloud developer based. And when they add in the ability to bundle appointments, if you're interested in learning more about LatePoint, I actually to understand what I'm even talking about with those two things, check out my late point video uh, that I have here on my channel. Um, but late point is for, for booking uh, appointments. You can see the interface is just beautiful. It's super easy to just click and find a time. It integrates so beautifully with WordPress. So if you're like me and you have a WordPress based uh, business and WordPress is powering your website and your user uh, interaction, uh, really, really recommend, uh, I really recommend late point. For years, I've used Book Like a Boss, and I won't stop recommending Book Like a Boss. That's still a phenomenal tool, and it has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars and streamlined and simplified my booking process. But there are a couple things that LatePoint offers that I really think will make a difference in my ability to just push my business another 5 10%. And like I said, a big part of my business is booking one-on-one -on -one calls. I've had the pleasure of working with so many of you on those calls. And I think that late point will be a great addition to my tech stack because it'll create a portal for those who book appointments with me to be able to go in and e more easily book another call, more easily see data related to their call there. I can create a little dashboard for them. There's just a lot I want to try out. And this also has the ability to allow me to offer, like think of them like order bumps, but with appointment booking. There's just a lot of things I want to try out with this. So this will be the newest addition to my tech stack going into 2024. I look forward to making some videos on it and sharing kind of that success, um, hopefully <laughs> success that I've had with the tool and going into the next year. And, and I'll honestly be able to say, yeah, like moving to late point was a good or a bad decision for this piece and area of my business. All right, that's it. That's my tech stack, at least most of the tech stack that I'm going to talk about today. If there are other additions to my tech stack uh, in the future, I'll make more videos about those. But that's the focus of my tech stack going into this new year. And if you've been watching videos on my channel and kind of following along in my journey, you'll know that there are a couple big changes in this tech stack. And although I know probably less than 2% of you made it to this point in the video, but for those of you that did, I just want to emphasize again that just because these are the tools that I'm using does not mean that they are the only tools that you can use. It doesn't mean that they are necessarily the best tools. They're just the best tools for me. And I have always maintained in my business, the thing that I focus on is trying to make the, the right recommendation for the right person. And when you have a YouTube channel like this and there's thousands of people watching, I have to kind of generalize. And so in a generalized way, if someone were to say to me, Doug, what's the best tech stack for a business like yours uh, in 2024, I would say check out this video where I go through the tech stack that I'm using because this is it. This is what I feel is the best tech stack for a business like mine run by a person like me. It gets the job done in a fantastic way. So I'm glad that I was able to get this video done early this year and I'm able to put this video onto my channel because I think that this will be a great foundation moving forward as a stepping stone for me to be able to launch into my content schedule for the rest of the year on a lot of these new tools that I'm introducing to the tech stack, as well as supporting and continuing to train and show you all the great things that you can do with some of the tools that we've all used for years. So thanks for being a part of the channel. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in the rest of the year.